Thank you for joining me for the Daily Bread Bible Study. This is day 74 for Judges chapters 6 through 8. So we get to talk about an important figure. We get to talk about Gideon here in the book of Judges in these chapters. And we'll see that some things change, yet some things stay the same. Namely, the theology of the Babylonian exile is repeated here, that humans ignore God. And then humans suffer, and then God finds a way to redeem them. So humans forget God, suffer, and then God redeems. We'll see that all the way through here, and even at the end, the story and the cycle will repeat. Now the Israelites did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hand of Midian seven years. And in verse 3, for whenever the Israelites put in seed, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. They would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the land. Thus, Israel was greatly impoverished because of Midian. So we see that uh, the Lord speaks to them. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. You shall not pay... Uh, Reverence to the gods of the Amorites in which in whose land you live, but you have not given heed to my voice. So then Gideon is called to help deliver them. In Judges 6 verse 12, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. Gideon answered him, But sir, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? Good question. Well, Gideon's call story seems kind of similar to Moses. There are several questions of why are your people suffering and how can I deliver them? And also the asking for God to show a sign. In Judges 6.21, Then the angel of the Lord reached out the tip of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened cakes. And fire sprang up from the rock and consumed the meat and unleavened cakes. And the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. Gideon is then called by God to, quote, put down the altar of Baal that belongs to your father and to cut down the sacred pole that is beside it and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of the stronghold here. Now Gideon does it, but is nervous, so he does it at night. In the morning, the townsfolk seek to kill Gideon. Then his father Joash defends his son Gideon and essentially stands up for the Lord against Baal. Gideon mobilizes members of the tribe of Manasseh, Asher, Zebulon, and Naphtali to take on the Midianites and the Amalekites. And then verse 36, it's one of the most notable stories for Gideon when Gideon wants a sign from God. I'm going to lay a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on this fleece al alone and it is dry on the ground, then I shall know that you will deliver Israel by my hand, as you have said. And so it was. Well, in verse 39, let me please make trial with the fleece just once more. Let it be dry only on the fleece, and on the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night. It was dry on the fleece only, and on all the ground there was dew. Thus Gideon confirms that God is indeed with him and will deliver Israel. So feeling emboldened, that makes God's re next request even more impressive. God wants anyone unsure of battle to leave. Uh, for with too many troops, it says, Israel would only take credit away from me, saying, My own hand has delivered me. So God sends away 22,000, leaving only 10,000. And God still thinks that that's too much. So God further reduces the troops to only 300 who lap water from the river as dogs lap, instead of cupping with their hands. In Judges 7, verse 7, Then the Lord said to Gideon, With the 300 that lapped, I will deliver you, and give the Midianites into your hand. Let all others go to their homes. They don't have the brightest bunch going to fight this. So they're going to need some help. They're really going to need to depend upon God. In another sign of God's acting, God then invites Gideon to a trust exercise. In Judges 7 verse 9, 
That same night the Lord said to him, Get up and attack the camp, for I have given it into your hand. But if you fear to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Pura, and you shall hear what they say, and afterwards your hand shall be strengthened to attack the camp. So Gideon goes down, overhears the enemy troop describing a strange dream of collapsed tent. Gideon worships God and goes to rally the troops. And the 300 men come upon the enemies in Judges 7.22. When they blew the 300 trumpets, the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow and against all the army, and the army fled. Gideon calls the leaders of Ephraim to take over, overtake the Midianites, which they do. Now, instead of being pleased, the Ephraimites are unhappy Gideon acted with only 300 men. Gideon calls their capture of the Midianite leaders valuable, so they kind of drop their complaints. In pursuit still of the 15,000 troops of the Midianites, the people of Succoth and Penuel refuse to feed his 300 men. Gideon swears retribution, and he takes, uh, which he takes after capturing the two Midianite leaders. After receiving a side comment about Gideon looking like the son of a king, Gideon slays the two Midianite leaders for having killed many of his family at Tabor. Uh, Gideon's uh, idolatry, though, um, happens here. In Judges 8.22, Then the Israelites said to Gideon, Rule over us, you and your son and your grandson also, for you have delivered us out of the hand of Midian. So Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, and my son will not rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. Now, so far was so good, right? But in Judges 8.27, Gideon then makes an ephod of it and puts it in his town, in um, Ophrah. Ophrah. Um, Ophrah. And all Israel uh, prostituted themselves to it and became a snare to Gideon and his family. So Midian was subdued before the Israelites, and they lifted up their heads no more. So the land had rest forty years in the days of Gideon. In Judges 8.33, we see things kind of repeat here, because as soon as Gideon died, the Israelites relapsed and prostituted themselves with the Baals, making Baal Bareth their god. The Israelites did not remember the Lord their god, who had rescued them from the hand of all their enemies on every side. And they did not exhibit loyalty to the house of Jerubbabel, that is Gideon, in return for all the good that he had done to Israel. So, like I said before, some things change, but some things never change. Anyways, we'll pick up with the story of Gideon's son, Abimelech, next time.